These are the best motorcycles of 2018, according to some guy on the internet who went to a show with a cell phone. So up first, the Ducati Scrambler is bigger now. It's 1100. It's real. Go ahead, touch it. You know you want to touch it. It's not your imagination. It's real. So if you bought a 900 last year, you're a sucker because now it's bigger, it's better, and it's faster. So that's the Ducati 1100 Scrambler. Old school Scrambler looks with the modern Ducati engine. What's that you say? You don't like the Scrambler? You want to go faster? Behold the Panigale V4. So it's a four-cylinder motor that they've come out with rather than their twins that they've been making forever. And it's 214 horsepower, it's 386 pounds, and it's the most beautiful thing on the street. Look into its eye. You know you want one. Meanwhile, something large is looming on the dark side of Japan. It's the Star Eluder, the exact opposite of the Ducati we're just looking at. It's big, it's fat, and it's not fast. In fact, I don't know what on earth you would elude on this. I would prefer to elude things on that Ducati. But if you're eluding things for hundreds of miles at a time, the Star Eluder is your elusive, illusionary companion. And if you want to elude things and you don't need to bring a stereo and luggage with you, the VMAX is unchanged. Why is it the best bike of 2017? Why is it even on this list? Because it doesn't need to change. It is badass. It remains badass and it will continue to be badass. And they'll probably redesign it in about 15 years. And if you don't like things that are big or fast or expensive, step over to Royal Enfield. They've finally come out with a twin this year. That's revolutionary. They haven't had a twin since the like 1960s. So here you go. Twin 650, simple, fun to ride, cafe racer style, also available. That is the Royal Enfield Continental GT and Interceptor. Meanwhile, in Germany, Ach du Lieber, we have built a motorcycle that looks like a sort of missile or something. I don't know what it looks like, but it's beautiful. It's the R90 or ESA. Very nice. Everyone want one. Everyone want to go fast on one of these things. Very nice. Honestly, this is one of my favorite bikes. This might be my favorite bike at the show. I love the style of these. They came up with a really neat scrambler last year. This year, you get this... Uh, funky nose cone racer deal. I like it. And this is the most rebel bike that Harley makes because you have to be a rebel to ride this. It doesn't look like the other Harleys. It's their 750 street rod and the 750 is tuned up to make 68 horsepower. Uh, it's lighter than the Sportsters. It's also cheaper so that means it's the cheapest, quickest, best handling bike that Harley makes. That's the only way to go if you're a budget-minded guy and you don't care about all the guys on V-Twins telling you it's not a real Harley. I think they've done a good job redesigning this bike and I hope somebody buys one. I've only seen one on the street ever since they started making these. But if you're more of a traditionalist, the fat boy has gotten even fatter and shinier. 114 cubic inches there in the middle and uh, big silly fat tires and fat everything and an all new redesigned frame. They've gotten rid of the Dyna and they've gone with this sort of new soft tail frame that people say is really good. The Dyna people are upset. Um, I got an FXR and I'm going to keep it forever so I don't have a dog in this fight. And if you want something really retro, KiwiIndian.com builds retro Indian motorcycles based on the Indian designs but with beefed up parts, better electrics, better suspension, better uh, disc brakes, everything on it to make it reliable, make it last longer and still retain that serious classic look so people don't think that it's an imitation or a modern version of a classic but that it is actually an old school Indian motorcycle. Very cool. And to give you a sense of perspective this is what a modern 2018 Indian motorcycle looks like. Much bigger. Best piece of safety gear at the show? Boom! An airbag for your body. You just hook that up to your bike and when you become separated from it it inflates and you turtle up. Pretty cool. And if adventure is your thing, check out the new features on the Honda Africa Twin 30th Anniversary Edition. Good looking bike, 1000cc twin. It's less porky than some of the other supposed adventure bikes. So if you're going to really get off road and huck it down a ravine in South Africa, this is the bike to take. But if you don't want to spend 14 grand on an adventure bike that you're going to beat up, how about 34.95 for a brand new Chinese 250cc water cooled adventure bike, the CSC RX3 Adventure. These guys, I, they've been in business for 20 years, and some of these engine designs are old Honda designs that they've gotten a hold of, so reasonably reliable. So you got some luggage, you get the adventure look. You can put some BMW stickers on it, and people wouldn't be able to tell the difference from 20 feet. And if that sounds like too much money, how about $21.99? Again, this is a street-legal motorcycle with a license plate and turn signals and everything ready to go on the street, take you on an adventure. So there is no excuse for not having a new motorcycle 
for all your adventuring needs. Uh, this is from again from CSC. And if your budget is somewhere in between a Japanese bike and a Chinese bike, how about a Royal Enfield from India? 500cc bullet engine. It'll get you over the Himalayas in style. It's really cool that they finally built a bike that you can take off-road and beat up. I like it. And if you're looking for a 1980s retro bike, the Suzuki team has worked really hard to make the DR650 look exactly like a clunky, boxy, old relic from the 1980s. Look at the square headlight, the, the styling cues, even the graphics and the, the broad, flat seat. Brilliant, brilliant retro bike from Suzuki. And also in the Nouveau Retro category, this Triumph Thruxton 1200. So they've got the big motors in the Cafe Racers now. They're looking good. Everything on this bike looks and feels right. So I am a big fan of this bike. Um, this is also in here, so the people who yelled at me last year for not having any Triumphs in my Best Motorcycles video won't yell at me this year. I think this is a good choice for one of the best bikes of the year, for sure. And if you want to mach schnell, in style with your wife and your dog on the back of your bike, how about the Grand America BMW? 160 horsepower, son! So you can do, well, we don't have an Autobahn here. I guess you go up to Montana and do 150 miles an hour across America on this thing. Beautiful bat cycle with room for all your stuff. And in the best scooter category, the Honda CTX 700, which has a 600. 70 cc engine and a six-speed automatic transmission with manual mode so you can shift it with your finger if you want but there's no gear shifter on the bottom so if i had to ride a scooter i'd ride one of these and you might be saying hey that's not a real scooter all right fine how about a german 600 pound electric scooter that makes 48 horsepower that can go 99 miles this is from bmw only costs fourteen thousand dollars so there you go that's the other best scooter innovation at the show and if you're going to get dirty, how about the 690 Enduro KTM? I like this because you can ride it to the dirt and you can ride it on the dirt and it's got all the power you'll need. And one of the coolest looking bikes at the show as well. Be a dirt hooligan on this thing. Very nice. And in the best brand loyalty department, you got to give it to the Honda Goldwing. Goldwing people are a cult. They love their bikes. They're the nicest people in the world and they like to ride. A lot of people don't know this fun fact about the Honda factory. They build the Goldwing in the same factory that they build the Honda Civic in. They just take the roof off, cut it in half, and put a different body kit on it, and they've got a Goldwing. In the basic standard city commuter type bike category, I like this Moto Guzzi V9 Roamer. It's an 850cc V-twin, and I just love Moto Guzzi's. Looks like a lot of fun to ride. A lot more fun probably than the bigger, fatter bikes to just zip around town on this thing. And last, and probably also least, the unintimidating beginner bike category. This TU250X from Suzuki is classic. It looks like it rolled out of the 1970s. Lightweight, like riding a bicycle. Proven design, super reliable. Uh, unintimidating, low seat height beginner bike. So I'm glad that these things still exist. So thanks for watching. Those are my favorite bikes for 2018. Uh, tell me what I did right. Tell me what I did wrong. Tell me what you like and don't like. And I will do another one next year. Thanks.